This exercise refers to the accident that occurred on 5th of March 1993 at Skopje in Macedonia. At the time, it was the deadliest aircraft accident in Macedonia, killing 83 of the 97 occupants on board. The report of the investigation into this accident states that a Fokker 100 seconds after takeoff experienced heavy vibrations followed by a sudden 10 degree right bank, a 50 degree left bank and a 55 degree right bank. The right wing tip struck the ground 382 meters past the runway end with a 90 degree bank. The wing separated and the fuselage broke into three pieces. The investigation into the accident determined the cause of the accident to be a lack of ice awareness of the flight crew and the flight station engineer to carry out spraying of the aircraft with de-icing or anti-icing fluid in meteorological conditions conducive to icing. In the above description, both visible events and the causes for those events are shown with a significantly high level of detail. Before using the GP1020 prototype, it is first necessary to set the situation as if the accident had just occurred, and it is obvious that the GP1020 program should be utilised in an investigation that begins in earnest. In other words, all that is currently known are the rough visible, as in from a very far distance, events that spectators would have seen. Shortly after the Fokker took off, it banked suddenly right, then left, then right again. At this point, the right wing tip struck the ground, the wing separated, and the fuselage broke into several pieces. The causes are not yet known, nor are the measurements in bank angle or distance time from the runway. It is possible to speculate that perhaps not all of the rough description would be found shortly after the accident either, but for this case study it is assumed as such. The next thing to consider is to try and match up the rough visible elements with the events and flight phases utilised by GP1020. For now, and in most uses of the GP1020 program, the first thing to do is to choose the most obvious likely event with a known associated flight phases to begin questioning in GP1020. It is highly obvious that there is a link between the plane somehow colliding with the ground and it occurring shortly after takeoff. The corresponding codes would then be in-flight collision with terrain or water and takeoff initial climb. As explained before, first of all we need to answer the two questions shown in the bottom box. By clicking on the yellow box next to the first question, what occurred, from the drop down menu we choose the answer, in-flight collision with terrain or water. Similarly, by clicking on the yellow box next to the second question during what phase did it occur, we choose the answer takeoff initial climb as an appropriate answer for this particular case. Soon after, the third question appears, did a loss of control in flight occur? Accordingly, from the drop down menu we choose the answer no. Consequently, the top 20 most similar cases display on the top box, and the fourth question, did anything occur during landing, flare or touchdown, appears. We assign the answer yes, and procedure continues with the fifth question asking, did a forced landing occur? We choose the answer no, and we continue answering questions in order to increase the amount of variation in relevancy. To the sixth question, did anything occur during landing, a roll, in accordance with information available, we allocate our answer, no, and then question 7, did an in-flight collision with object occur, appears. Our answer is yes. At this stage, the program highlights Boeing, Air Florida Inc, Washington, as the first on the list. According to the NTSB database, this is of the event that occurred on the 13th of January 1982 at Washington. According to the NTSB database, a Boeing 737-222 crashed on takeoff from Washington National Airport in severe weather conditions. The investigation of this accident revealed that the major cause for this tragedy was crew failure to activate the engine anti-ice systems. In conclusion, it is obvious that the accident on the 13th of January 1982 at Washington, retrieved by GP1020 with only seven questions, has similarities with respect to the causal factors with the accident that occurred on the 5th of March 1993 at Skopje, and would most likely have assisted in understanding the circumstances and causes of the Skopje accident. 
The GP1020 computer program does have certain limitations, which are mainly related to the specific knowledge stored as well as the limitation of the design technique used. As mentioned earlier, the NTSB Aviation Accident Database was used as expert knowledge in creating the GP1020 computer tool. It is available online and contains highly classified and downloadable data sets of more than 140,000 aviation accidents. Although this database is comprehensive in its contents, it has been created according to its owner's intent and does not precisely fit the data requirements of GP1020. Hence, the first and major current limitation is that there is no uniform data classification method and so it is impossible to combine all statistics to form a broad database which is desirable for effective GP1020 operation. Thus, the main limitation of this application lies in the lack of specific expert knowledge that can be used by the GP1020 program. The other significant limitation is that of computer power, either changing the code to suit a particular operating system or utilising hardware with greater computing power would rectify this problem. As far as the future work is concerned, one immediate pathway for future research would be a complete implementation of the proposed Global Expert System solution for aircraft accident investigation. The biggest challenge of this undertaking would be collecting and collating all global forensic accidents and incident data to date, and then using this as stored knowledge within the expert system program. From here, additional testing of the accuracy of the historical data would be necessary to ensure validity of the system's results. Once successful, implementation of the software into the systems of various air safety organisations would have to be considered so that the program code can be altered, changed or rewritten to suit the new environmental operating system. It is certain that this task would be difficult and time consuming, but nevertheless achievable and potentially very useful in the following areas. Firstly, facilitating and enhancing aircraft accident investigation outcomes. This program would be able to determine the causes of aircraft accidents and incidents with a high rate of accuracy. And secondly, a permanent assessment of safety threats to aircraft. The program would be able to rapidly link updated safety data from many different sources including aircraft, ATC and other relevant sources in order to continuously assess the possible danger factors for aircraft accidents and provide instant measures to remove or reduce these threats. Once this software reaches a certain level of maturity, by significantly increasing the computation time and accuracy, it may well be able to handle emergencies on the fly. In conclusion, the novel GP1020 investigation tool has been a successful demonstration of applying an expert system concept to aircraft accident investigation. Results obtained during the testing of the GP1020 prototype encouraged the application of a global expert system by increasing the program's knowledge pool to include historical data from many other international sources other than those currently being used. Finally, the expert system methodology developed for this application could potentially be successfully used in improving air traffic safety. A fully developed global system will be able to provide a continuously updated assessment of safety threats to aircraft in flight and provide crews with instant measures to remove or reduce those dangers. This could be achieved via a continuous communication of current information related to air safety, assessed with respect to prior historical data stored in the expert system program. Thank you.